guy who had serving again. Ball hit over by Garvey. That's saved by Danielson. Guy Hui Danielson. Good hit that time on a step out move by Batista. Batista, only a sophomore. She will contribute in the years to come. 16 13 Hawaii leading. They got, they, got a, they got a great freshman coming in next year. They're redshirting right now. 6 3. Hard tongue. Our tongue is able to blast that one off link. 17 13, Hawaii leading, and Satelli will go back to serve. Hits it in. Look up by Anxo. They go cross court. Baldwin is able to go across her body with the hit and get it in. 17 14. And you're right, Hawaii just seems to be half stepping through this game. I mean, well, we've got a little different lineup. We've got Hartong playing on the outside. They have Forsyth playing in the middle opposite Brittany Hewitt. So they showed she's doing a little experimenting. Got Chantil Satelli hitting out of the back row now. She does have a back row sub. Chang starting. Dink saved by Chang. Diving dig. Link gets it across. Satelli. Mafua. And the ball is hit down at that time by Hartung. Hartung appears to be getting more comfortable. He's hitting the ball better and better with more force. Maeda will come into the game and she will serve 18 14. Oh, what you're leaving here in the third set. Hartung with nine kills now, only one error. She's hitting over 600. Serving is Maeda in the air by Chang. Link. Harrington gets it over. Satelli, Mafua. Ball is blocked back after the hit by Hewitt. Danielson dug up by Link. Ball is pushed over. There's Maeda. Mafua. Danielson. Danielson hitting that ball by the uh, pass the double block of Santiago and also Baldwin. Ooh, Danielson got all of that one and more. 19-14, Hawaii leading. Serving is Maeda. In the air by Link. Santiago goes to Anxo. That's dug up by Satelli. Santiago just tries to get it over, and a lift is called. Lift is called on Hewitt. Shoji does not believe that. <laughs> the reason he's up is that, you know, the rules say that the first contact is called very loosely. So we see a lot of people handle the ball in the first contact and, and they butcher it and so but when the ball comes to rest like it did with Brittany Hewitt's hands just then the referee will often call that one when it comes to rest Anxo puts it into the net 20 to 15 Hawaii leading same scenario in all three sets tonight Santiago put over by Baldwin nice little touch by Baldwin that ball floating over the outstretched hands of Danielson. Baldwin having a good night as well. Seven kills. Only one error. For good percentage. Serving as Baldwin. She serves it wide. 21-16. Hawaii closing in on the match now. That would make their record 12-1 before they go on the first road trip of the WAC season or of the season in general. Big hit by Harrington. Goes off Maeda, and Maeda puts it out. Well, Harrington's as good an outside hitter, in my opinion, as Hawaii's seen all year long on, on the left side. She brings a lot of heat. She can hit line. She can hit angle. She can go over. But she's going to face two blockers every time. Santiago serving. Mafua step out. Danielson and a solo block by Harrington. And Harrington shows that she can play defense as well. She's got the, she's got the complete game. It's no wonder she's one of their captains, one of their all-time leading kill leaders. 21-18. Danielson, that's a long way to go for Mafua. Well, it just touched over by Garvey, chased down by Maeda near the net. Overpass saved by Maeda. 
So Tully gets it across. Garvey, that ball goes off to Ihui and out. Every time Satelli got into the net as well. And this, this Nevada team not giving up, they're pesky. 21-19, Nevada has closed to within two. So Hawaii has to turn up the knob on their intensity here for the rest of this match if they want to sweep. Both coaches with the two timeouts left, neither has used a timeout. Now it's kind of interesting, this late in the game, all the way into the 20s, and no timeout's been called by either team. Santiago, left-handed serve, dug up by Danielson. Mafua back to Danielson, double block, and she hits it off the block. Now that's a point for Hawaii, 22 to 19. When in doubt, dial five. So Danielson, number five for Hawaii, comes through. I'd love to see her hit just one really hard jump serve. Gets three, it in. Three quarters. Harrington, Santiago, Garvey. There's Kaihui Mafua. Hard time. That's in. 23 to 19. So Hawaii looks over their shoulder. They see Nevada sitting there, and they uh, put it into a, another gear. The set of the match is sponsored by Rooms Hawaii. More value, more choices, more rooms. Rooms Hawaii. You see the back set by Mafua right where Kanani Danielson loves to get it set out there in that antenna, giving her just enough room to hit it down the line. 23 serving 19, third set. Danielson serving. Back up by Link Santiago, put over by Harrington. There's Kai Hui, Mafua. Satelli. Trying to dig it up that time was Link. And she couldn't do it. Ran out of gravity. This is match point. Hawaii, one point away from their 12th victory against one loss. Nevada would be six and seven. Serving is Danielson. Gets it in. Ball dug up by Link. Outside it goes to Garvey. And that will be a point. 24 for Hawaii, 20 for Nevada. And serving will be Harrington, the troubadour out of St. Francis in Manoa Valley. Artum. And it's over. Hawaii wins it 25-20. They sweep Nevada 25-19, 25-18, 25-20. The most outstanding players sponsored by Bank of Hawaii, Emily Hartung from Hawaii. She hit 714, had 11 kills. 714. <laughs> and uh, from Nevada, Lindsay Baldwin, she had eight kills and hit 368. The most outstanding players are congratulated by the Bank of Hawaii. Hawaii winning in three again tonight. This time it's over Nevada. In this segment, How It Works, sponsored by Central Pacific Bank. CPB works for you. Well, here we're going to really watch Shatil Satelli at the net during this transition play. Uh, we're going to get a great dig by, by Mafua right there, dives down, and then Kai Hui frees it right there. So Kai Hui is going to be setting all the way over, but had Satelli not gotten back and then run forward again, she probably wouldn't have not gotten the set, nor would she have gotten the kill. It's called getting off the net and attacking. Roll it. And she goes up to the net, and she can attack that ball right down the line and picks up one of her, oh, 10 or 11 kills she had tonight. Ten, nine kills. There you see, she's at the net. Next thing you know, she gets back off the net and then runs forward again to get an approach. And that is how it works. And here it is one more time. Here's Mafu with the dig. Beautiful set across court by Kai Hui and Satelli getting off the net so she can get a run-up approach to get her ninth kill of the night. 
We'll be back and talk about uh, final words and also the road trip and when's the next time we're going to see this team. This is the Red Star moment. It's sponsored uh, by Heineken. Give yourself a good name. When you talk about rallies, you're going to have to talk about this one. Well, there are a lot of digs, that's for sure. This is when Kai Hui got a bunch of digs. But this rally goes on literally forever. Here's Kai Hui with one of her digs. She had 12 digs in game one. We could have given her player of the match very easily. I mean, it just keeps going and going. Excellent defense on the part of both teams. And the crowd is enthralled at this point. Well, yeah, they're Link, Link and Kai Hui, the two liberos, having a field day digging a lot of balls. Another dig by, by her shoulder from Kai Hui. 65 touches in this rally. 65. An amazing display. Another dig by Kai Hui. And finally, Nevada, Baldwin gets it over and down. And you can see the, the fans. I mean, volleyball to them is the, is the bottom line. And when they see something like that, I mean, their appreciation is really unlimited. I mean, they really enjoyed that. I think I saw a couple of leave then saying, hey, thank you very much. I got my money's That's worth. It. I'm out of yeah. here. <laughs> That's it. That's all I need. That's all I need. But that was just incredible. That was yeah. that was terrific. Now, this this team goes on the road, and then it comes back, and it does something that right, I, I think it's rare. Maybe they've done it before. They don't play. They just take some time off. They don't play. There's no schedule in there, good or bad. Well, you know, that's a great question. I think if Dave could have scheduled another match against a top 10 team, that would have been ideal. Would have helped his RPI, would have helped uh, the team, you know, build some confidence by play, by seeing how they play on the road against a really difficult team. But sometimes the scheduling wise, it's tough to fit those people in there and they won't play on a Monday or Tuesday when you have to play. And so uh, it didn't work out, but I, if I could have, I would have, bye aunties. I, if I could have, I would have uh, scheduled a, a game there, given that much time. He's, he'll be off for two weeks, basically. What are the uh, Antis going to do? What are they going to do? I don't know. Do? You know, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good We should ask them. What do, you, what do you do when the volleyball team is not going on? You aren't making lays for everybody. That's Charlie Wade, the men's coach. What a job he's done with the men's yeah, team. Really. They've really turned well, what around. A, I'll tell you this. What a job you've done. And you have to uh, depart and go back to the coast in Palo Alto, California for your duties with Stanford University. Again, I thank you for all that uh, you've done in our coverage so far of the uh, Rainbow Wahine and their fortunes here. Going to miss you, and I can't wait to see you again, perhaps in the playoffs. <laughs> well, thanks, Jim. Perhaps yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah, I'll be available for the playoffs. I'm just going up there for a couple months, and then I'll be coming for Christmas, then I'll do some duty after Christmas. But I'm just, again, basically taking the place of, of Al Rodriguez, the great Al Rodriguez, who, you know, who died of cancer last year, and they just haven't gotten anybody to take his place yet. So I'm sort of pulling uh, part-time interim duty trying to fill his large shoes. So I'm going to do this this year, and then hopefully that'll be it. I'll be back here to really retire with you. Thank you. <laughs> the Warrior football team returns to Aloha Stadium tomorrow afternoon, 5.30 start for a non-conference game against the Charleston Buccaneers of the Big South Conference. To watch it live, join the fans in the stands or catch all the action on Oceanic, uh, Oceanic Pay-Per-View on Channel 255. To order, call 643-2100. The game will be repeated on Sunday morning at 10.30. For Chris McLaughlin, this is Jim Leahy. Thanks to our crew. Thanks for watching. This has been another exclusive sports presentation of K5, the home team. Yeah, baby. Good.